Hello, and welcome to the epicest bracket challenge of all time, the search for the best Weird Al song. I am your resident Weird Al historian, and I'll be taking you a, uh, a walk through the, the man's career, which, you know, is, is quite impressive. The man was putting out an album almost every other year for, uh, like, a very long time, through the decades, and... He's put out a lot of hits. I, I am a Weird Al fan through and through, always have been. Uh, but I, I, I really don't know. A question that came to me was, I, I don't know what would be the best. There's just so many to choose from. So uh, what I've whipped up here is a very uh, fly-by-night uh, bracket. Uh, I had to. You can't just auto-generate brackets apparently online, so I had to take my time with this it probably there's probably a better way to do this so let's let's just jump right into it i'm going to be firing from the hip uh with a lot of these uh so if i don't have a lot to say it's really just because i don't have <laughs> anything to say but i know once we get into the some of the more dicier decisions i will be uh probably you know not not being so short with a lot of these uh so like for instance like we got ricky first song on the first album, Weird Al Yankovic, uh, and Gotta Boogie, uh, which, I, I gotta be honest, a lot of these songs, I've listened to all these albums a bunch of times, and, uh, there's some where I'm like, yeah, I recognize that on the track list, but, uh, there, there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of songs that I just skip over, and, uh, I gotta say, if I'm really picking between Gotta Boogie, which, like, I, I was listening to some of these songs just, like, earlier, and I, I can't even really find anything good to say about it. Uh, you know, it's a first album, but uh, you know, I gotta give it to Ricky. Up next, I'm gonna zoom in even more. We got I Love Rocky Road, a classic parody of a uh, terrible song that I'm sure everybody hates, uh, like me. I usually skip it when it's on the radio. But I Love Rocky Road had a, you know, it's, it's, it's the only acceptable version of I Love Rock and Roll. It doesn't have the... Uh, nauseating vocals it, it is you know who 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 doesn't like rocky road it's it's a relatable song the first i don't even yeah again like buckingham blues no one, no one cares about buckingham blues uh we got the okay now this is where it gets a little dicey happy birthday which is i i i, I think this should be a staple the beatles tried to make their own birthday song and i i think it's you know in their catalog it falls very short but i think happy birthday it has some you know, very, uh, you know, early Weird Al, his, like, signature energy and, like, just laying into that tempo. He, he, making the polka really come alive, uh, for something as old as, you know, <laughs> the dusty old birthday song. But then he got Stop Dragging My Car Around, which is, like, a great, a great parody. Yeah, this is kind of hard. I gotta lean a little more towards Happy Birthday. But, uh, yeah, this is a very close one. Uh, on any, on certain days, I might even lean a little closer to Stop Dragging My Car Around, but... I can listen to Happy Birthday and never, never uh, just skip over it. I think it's great. Uh, next up, we got My Bologna and the checks in the mail. Like, uh, My Bologna, again, another, just one of his early parodies that just shot him right to uh, stardom. I think people were starting to see, like, this guy, this guy, when you put food in his mind, he's going to he's gonna write some pretty funny stuff. But checks in the mail, the thing is, this song is genius. Because, literally, it's as relevant then, when it was made in the 80s, as it is today. And you can really just chalk this up to, like, email as well. People are still awful with returning emails. People make up all sorts of excuses. It's just an accepted part of social interaction with people. And the, the, the song is brilliant about just, like, the degradation of somebody's mental state over just getting all these excuses. And the more ridiculous they get, the more, like, powerless they are. So... I gotta lean toward checks in the mail, but My Bologna, great song. Another classic. Another, another one, Rides of the Bus. I, I This song is so burned into my brain that uh, when when I hear the tune, Another One Bites the Dust, uh, my brain... I've said this multiple times. Like I'll, I'll say, oh, it's Another One Rides the Bus, thinking that that's just the Queen version. If I have to pick anything negative about it, the the production's kind of weak uh, compared to the other parodies. It's it's very it's going for like a very lo-fi polka parody thing. Um, fun live. There's I've seen some really fun live versions of the song, but uh, I don't hate it. Uh, but I can see like mellow when I'm dead. This song is is just bursting with energy and it's uh there there's uh, very early on Weird Al is writing these sort of songs that are about death. And, uh, just people spinning it in a very, uh, funny, ridiculous way, but, um, almost from the perspective of somebody that's just at the end of their rope. Maybe they're at the end of their life, but, uh, 
Yeah, they're they're just they're getting the making the getting inside the head of someone that's just crazy and I I, I gotta le lean over towards Mel when I'm dead. I love I, I love the production, the song, and uh, I do skip over another one rides the bus a lot more than uh, I'll play this. Such a groovy guy. No one really cares. Mr. Frump and the Iron Lung is all right. It's kind of a one note joke in my opinion. Um, I mean, it has a really funny it the the it, it's sort of like. It all built up to like this one bit where yeah the they're like take it, it it's like um the lonely island song uh sax man where like they're hyping this this kid prodigy up but then every time they cut back uh it's just <laughs> nothing it's just a guy breathing on the thing but it, it plays with the silence very well and yeah i, I, I gotta give it to mr frump uh, i don't know how long that one's gonna last in the bracket but uh that one's good. Uh, jumping right into uh, my one of my favorite Weird Al albums, prob maybe even my favoritest uh, Weird Al album is Weird Al in 3D. We got uh, Eat It, which uh, is you know it's another one where like people, you know, like for as far as like the Michael Jackson parodies, I feel like that's what people really started, and even to this day still think of Weird Al. The music video is very funny, uh, but we're not judging it on just the video. If that was the case. You know, it'd be a whole different bracket. Um, but I think it's fine. Um, it's not even, like, I don't even, like, beat it really that much. So, like, this song doesn't really add anything or really... It's kind of like neck and neck, honestly, with Michael Jackson, uh, his version. Midnight Star, though. Holy crap. I love everything about this song. Uh, down to the production, the keyboards, the, uh, the, the conspiracy theories, the... You know, we all... It, Again, it's it's still relevant today. Like you you go to the checkout aisle, you're at like a 7-Eleven, you're going to see National Enquirer, you're going to see all these ridiculous I mean even in the the age of clickbait, uh this this is just a genius song. Uh I, I love it. It always makes me laugh, so I'm going to give it to Midnight Star. That chorus, the bridge, everything about it. It just gets it really is a song that gets me pumped up uh if I'm like having a bad day or just need some energy. Love Midnight Star. Coming up next, uh, The Brady Bunch, uh, the parody of The Safety Dance. And it's a good parody. Um, you know, I like Safety Dance. I, I, I never watch The Brady Bunch, but I don't think you necessarily need to. The show is pretty much just laying out what the show was, the dynamic of the characters, and uh, it's fine. It's good. It's not, uh, it's not great, but it's also not, like, you don't have to have watched the show to get it. You're not, it's not any uh, inside baseball. Buy Me a Condo, though, this is one where it's really off the beaten path, and I think, like, at the time, like, reggae was, like, into the, slipping into the public zeitgeist, uh, into, like, pop music, and I, I think he knocks it out, like, the character he's playing, like, this guy that, you know, comes from Rostaland, he's coming to America, like, this is a, a common theme in reggae music, but the idea that this guy is just gonna say, yeah, forget all that, I'm gonna get a condo, I'm gonna get a... A, a Lacoste t-shirt and uh, uh, the shirt with the alligator on, as he puts it. Uh, I love it. I think it's funny. I think it's like, it's not like a tragic tale. It's like, yeah, no, the guy just is objectively buying into the American way of life in, a, in an unexpected way. So got to give it to buy me a condo. It's hilarious. Up next, we got I Lost on Jeopardy. Again, amazing music video. It's hilarious. An early classic for Weird Al. Uh, the, the original, Our Love's in Jeopardy, you don't really hear it as much now in radio. It, it, it was kind of just like a, a bit of a one-hit wonder. Maybe occasionally hear it on like Jack FM or uh, some uh, nostalgic uh, 80s uh, radio station. But I love uh, I Lost on Jeopardy, the... Just how uh, biting the satire is, the fact they get, like, Don Pardo or someone, I, mean, I think maybe even, like, a sound-alike to come in and say he's, like, a jerk and embarrassing his family for generations. The uh, the anxiety of being, like, losing to, like, pretty common people on a show. for uh, it, It's just a nightmare that is hilarious, and that's what Weird Al does best. Polka's on 45. Let me get my, uh, my sheet out on this. I've written all the uh, Polka parodies as well. And I believe this is the first, yeah, this is the first uh, Polka parody. And it's got some stuff, you know, it's got some good things like, uh, you know, the uh, <laughs> Devo, we got Smoke on the Water, uh, yeah, Hey Jude, it, it, it's fine, it's it's good. Like, all the Polkas are great, I don't think he has, like, a single bad one. Um, but really, I, I, I think I gotta give it to, I think I gotta give it to I Lost on Jeopardy, I just love this song. Uh, I'm sure there'll be plenty of Polka parodies that just, like, immediately shoot right to the top, but, uh, yeah, a uh, lot to appreciate about 
I lost on Jeopardy. Uh, next up, we got Mr. Popale and King of Suede. Mr. Popale is... It's fine. It's a B-52s... Like, Weird Al does this thing where, like, he's either going to be lifting directly from a song's parody, or he's going to just try to do a sound-alike. And I think, like, he's going for a, a B-52s sort of sound-alike thing. And for the most part, uh, mostly thanks to the uh, the female... Or the... Yeah, the female vocals on this. Uh, that sounds sexist. I don't know why that sounds sexist. Uh, you know, the person is supposed to sound like the, uh, the one of the singers of the B-52s. They capture the sound. I don't know that, like, uh, the joke is really that funny. I think it's just more of, like, a fun, like, I, I think of it more as a B-52 song rather than, like, the substance of the song, like, the lyrical substance. King of Suede is great. Um, this is a case where I, uh, I didn't even know the song that was being parodied. I, I knew it was, like, a, a, a police sound alike. But apparently, like, years later, I'd find it's uh, King of Pain, which is a great police song. But I love the storytelling in King of Suede. This guy that, like, is on a strip mall. He's next to an arcade. He's going to give you a, the sweetest deal for your prom on a, on a cheap suit with, like, this crazy fabric pattern. I love King of Suede. It's going right up. Next up, we got That Boy Could Dance and The Theme from Rocky Thirteen. Oh, these are really tight. Um... Yeah, really, really hard to say. That Boy Can Dance, great storytelling about a, a guy that's like a nerd in school, doesn't really have any friends, but they, they, it always comes back to, but he had this one quality that made him so confident and made he made him not really a tragic character, and that's the fact he could dance. It leads to like a happy ending. It's a very uh, inspiring tale. I'm sure a lot of people, uh, a lot of nerds growing up, like me at least, like resonated with this song and just sort of got like the hope uh, sort of like a napoleon dynamite finale moment where you're like yeah it really like social class being popular doesn't matter if you have a skill that no one else can touch that really does pay dividends in the future and uh i've always loved that one theme from rocky 13 though that's great the rye or the kaiser uh it's 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 a great parody i think it's a great parody it's touching it has a lot to say i think at this point rocky 4 had come out and Obviously, it's play on the uh, the exhaustion of sequelitis, uh, which is always funny to me because it's like people think Rocky IV is a bad movie, and I, I I don't get that because like I think it's one of the best movies, and it's not till five things get bad, or even the um, uh, three with Mr. T. I think as forgettable as that movie is, uh, I, I, I it's it's a series where like just when you think like they they they're, it's down and out, it has some new life and. It makes you think about the series, <laughs> the iconic Rocky theme. Uh, it, it, it's funny, but that boy can dance. That boy could dance goes great. I think it's great. I love it. It's going up. I think it beats it just by hair. So next we got uh, what plays at the end of Weird Al in 3D and what uh, kicks off the next album, Dare to be Stupid. Uh, these two are great. Uh, Weird Al would always... He's, he started ending his songs with these great uh, ballads that would, uh, you know, they were usually a little bit longer than the rest of the tracks. And it, it paints a really good picture. Again, sort of typing, tack, uh, tap, tapping into the sequelitis of uh, horror films, I, I think specifically uh, the Friday the 13th films. Uh, maybe Nightmare on Elm Street. I, I always got more of a, a Friday the 13th vibe. Obviously, those were uh, done to death. Um <laughs> throughout the 80s and uh you know even even today but like a surgeon is it, it's one of the most iconic weird al songs and it, it doesn't get old it has it, it really matches the energy of what it's aping the madonna song the classic madonna song great music video great imagery that he's uh putting out for there also people sort of distrust with the medical industry distrust of doctors malpractice suits this is a very evergreen song uh they're both pretty evergreen but i gotta give it to like a surgeon personally up next we got the uh title track of the album dare to be stupid and i want a new duck gotta be honest guys um i don't really i don't really care for dare to be stupid i respect dare to be stupid i understand its place in weird al's discography and is even just as like an individual song i get it the music video is fun it's what it's parodying is pretty obvious it's devo which does seem appropriate for Weird Al, but, um, yeah, I don't know, compared to I Want a New Duck, which is, I want a, what was it, like, I want a new drug, which, uh, it's, 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 it, I don't know, it's, they're both pretty stupid, but I Want a New Duck is stupid in the right direction, um, because, 
just the the very idea of wanting a new duck is like okay well you have to make a whole song about this and i i think it's a lot more pointed than dare to be stupid which is a lot more just lol random humor fortunately weird owl doesn't have a lot of that um but yeah, I've never really liked Dare to be Stupid, so I want a new duck. Beats it. Easy. Next up we got... Ooh. Ooh. I knew this was going to be a hard one. We got one more minute uh, and Yoda. Now, one more minute... I love both of these songs. One more minute is one of my favorite because uh, it's one of the early love songs that Weird Al taps into. And the guy can write... A decent love song. I'll just say it. Yes, it's funny. Yes, it's being done through satire, but it's it, it still elicits you know feelings. It's it's this guy in a really shitty relationship, and he's he's coming up with all these extreme reasons why like he just doesn't want to be with this person, and it's it's flipping the idea of like I would do anything for you for more than instead being I would do literally anything else. I would lick all the toilets in Grand Central Station. I would uh, rip out my intestines with a fork. All this v gruesome imagery, then spend one more minute with you. And uh, it's something that he kind of swings back to. I, I love this song. Yoda's great. It's it's a classic Weird Al. Not going to say it's not a classic. It, 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 it does kind of great a little bit. Like, if I'm in the wrong mood, I might not dig it. It's li live. This song sets the fucking audience on fire. Everyone loves Yoda, and it's it's... It's definitely, like, one of his best songs. Uh, but if I have to pick between the two, one more minute. Uh, I really love that song. Next up, we got George of the Jungle and ugh, Slime Creatures from Outer Space. Uh, uh, like, do I even really... Like, this is... It's kind of, like, a weird decision because, like, this song... Slime Creatures doesn't really do anything for me. George of the Jungle is, like... It's... It's fine. It's it's kind of hard to judge because I thought this was like a song they used in the movie, and maybe it's been a while since I've seen it. Maybe they I thought it was like for the film, but this song was just made like as like a uh, a cover years before the movie came out. The one with Brendan Fraser, obviously after the cartoon. Um, so it's it's just this weird anomaly of like, oh, you just wanted to <laughs> do the George of the Jungle song, all right, and. Uh, you know, it's. It, I guess Weird Al just owns it. It's probably uh, maybe even the version the most people think of. They'll they'll hear Weird Al's voice, but um, yeah, it's it's a weird anomaly for me. After that, we got girls just want to have lunch, and this is the life. Uh, yeah. Again, these this is a little hard because girls just want to have lunch is just nailing the song parody of uh, girls just want to have fun. The, the the burping and uh, just the imagery of all the food that they want. It's hilarious. Um, this is the life is also really great because it's just uh, someone just explaining how great their life is and how lush it is. Uh, I think it's something that every like it's a, an evergreen song. People just flaunting their wealth and living that good life while uh, other people probably could use some of it. Um, unnecessary wealth, people flaunting, like, uh, exorbitant wealth, uh, it, the music video for this always struck me as, like, oh, there's a music video, but it, it, it's just clips from movies of people having, like, a, a lavish lifestyle, uh, I like This Is The Life, uh, Girls Just Wanna Have Lunch is a fantastic song, but I gotta give it to This Is The Life, I love it, it has great, um, uh, a ragtime energy to it, too, um, uh, so, it's, it, in that way, I think it, like, stands out. Next up, we got uh, Cable TV and Hooked on Polkas. Cable TV is fine. Um, it kind of gets old. Like, the bit really doesn't go anywhere. Um, it's, uh, yeah, compared to Hooked on Polkas, which has just, like, great, great uh, songs, like, of all different types. Mostly, like, the, the best of the best, like, pop, rock, 80s stuff. Uh, you got 99 Red Balloons, Sharp Dressed Man, Method of Modern Love, Owner of a Lonely Heart. Yeah, Kenny Loggins, Twisted Sister, it's great. Uh, Quiet Riot, yeah, it's in Duran Duran, it's just, it, that one knocks out of the park. So I gotta give it to Hooked on Polkas. Living with a Hernia and Dog Eat Dog. Uh, these are good, both of these are great. Living with a Hernia, obviously a parody of Living in America by James Brown. Um, great parody, as, uh, takes it in a very unexpected direction, uh, in a way. It, it really is a education on what a hernia is. I'm sure if you uh, ask someone to 
uh, before the song came out to explain what a hernia was, they would say, oh, it's something with your, your back, but uh, this this does a really great job of explaining what it is. Maybe you had a hernia and you, you didn't even realize it. Uh, Doggy Dog is a uh, Talking Heads sort of sound like song. It's great. It's about climbing up the corporate ladder and uh, just the, uh, the, the sort of headspace that someone who is in that uh, journey in life what they would do and how uh it, it, through the lens of i guess how david byrne views life in boxes that are in this really weird everything is just strange to him um you know having a corporate job that you love must be uh uh just fascinating to david byrne so it's really tight uh between the two of these but i, I gotta give it to living with a hernia i love it great video too um great energy and uh yeah it's a just a classic parody Next up, we got Addicted to Spuds and One of Those Days. Yeah, these are great. Um, Addicted to Love is uh, a, a song that, like, one of those one-hit wonders that, like, maybe you might hear on the radio, but... Or even in the grocery store, I think... Um, and this doesn't really have much else to offer. Um, it's just sort of replacing love with potatoes, and Weird Al uh, is... He has a lot of things to say about potatoes, and it's... It's fine. Um, one of those days is just a classic Weird Al storytelling about how awful someone's day is and laughing through it, even though gruesome things are happening to them. Gotta give it to one of those days. Love one of those days. Next up, we got Polka Party. Okay, we have to be off into the... Oh yeah, no, the uh, the titular Polka Party. Yeah, no, it's not even a question. I don't even have to look at like what the, the songs being parodied are. I will, but like yeah, the other one is Here's Johnny, which is... It, 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 it's such an outdated kind of subject for a Weird Al song. Like, Johnny Carson is a legend in talk show, but, like, I, I don't think it really has much to say if you didn't grow up with Johnny Carson. If you, Even if you're like me, who, like, understands his place in comedy history and television. Um, yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah, no. Polka Party has uh, Party All the Time by Eddie Murphy. Come on. Like, and, and Phil Collins, uh, yeah, these are great. I, I, and Papa Don't Preach, it's, it's, a uh, one of his best polka songs, so, easy, polka party. We got Don't Wear Those Shoes and Toothless People, um, yeah, Toothless People, doesn't do anything for me, doesn't do anything for me, kind of a one-note joke. Don't Wear Those Shoes is, it's not great, but it also has some really, uh, it has a fun rhythm to it, the keys on it are great, um, yeah, it's the lesser of two evils. Next up, we got uh, Good Enough For Now and Christmas of Ground Zero. Don't even need to think about it. Christmas of Ground Zero is hilarious. One of the, uh, certainly not the last uh, horrific holiday song by Weird Al. So we got Fat and Stuck in the Closet with Vanna White. I, it, It's not a terrible song, Stuck in the Closet with Vanna White, but it's sort of touching on the uh, Johnny Carson thing where, like, I, the joke isn't really like Vanna White was like a very popular uh, co-host of Wheel of Fortune, but um, yeah, I don't know. I uh, gotta give it to Fat. It's just a classic. It's great, great video. Uh, Michael and Weird Al. Just it's it's a it's a classic, classic team up. I love it. Next up, we got this song is just six words long, and you make me. I do not care for you make me. It just does nothing for me. This song is just six words long. Is uh, it's sort of like the Mr. Frump song, where it has it's a it's a bit of a one note joke, but it uh it it, it nails the song that it's parodying, which is uh, I believe I got my mind set on you. Uh, I didn't know this song for the longest time, um, but uh, yeah, it's great. I think it's I think it's good. It's better than you make me. Easy. Next up, we got I think I'm a clone now and lasagna. Hmm, gotta think about this one. Weird Al's food parodies, obviously they're great. Um, it doesn't do it much for me as it did when I first got into Weird Al. I think I'm a clone now. Uh, parody, I think we're alone now. Is uh, just great. I, 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 I really like <laughs> I think I'm a clone now. I think the uh, different ways that Weird Al is able to tell a story about a clone and find all these hilarious scenarios for him to be in. It's, it, it's just better than... La Bamba, but with food, personally. That's just where I stand on it. Uh, and I think it just, the production's great on the song. I, I love how it sounds. It, it, it really just taps into, like, why that uh, was such a popular pop song. 
Hmm. This is going to be a lesser of the two evil situation. Just like one of Weird Al's, I'm in a bad relationship and you're annoying and I hate you, but like it's not that funny. There isn't really much to it. And Alimony is just like, it's a decent parody of Money Money. Money Money. Money Money. By, uh, uh, what was that? Billy Idol, I think? Yeah, I'm going to go with Alimony. Next up we got, yeah. Ugh, yeah, more or lesser two evils. Velvet, Elvis, or Twister? Um, yeah, I'll give it to Twister. Not, there isn't really much I have to say about this. Like, Weird Al writing a song about Twister and taking it to an extreme is kind of funny. Velvet Elvis doesn't do anything for me. Good old days in... Oh, boy. All right, so now... Yeah, was it? Yeah, all right. We got the end of Even Worse and the beginning of UHF, his uh, film album. Uh... Yeah, I, I love the James Taylor uh, <laughs> sound like of this. Like, it's not even really specifically ripping off or ripping off, parodying a uh, James Taylor song, but it, uh, it it takes his sort of whimsical Americana style of singing and guitar playing, perfectly emulates it, and finds a hilarious way to take it to a horrific place about a, a kid that was just torturing rats and <laughs> was basically a, a neighborhood nuisance. Uh, probably grew up to be a serial killer. Beverly Hillbillies, though. This is a great one. It's a great one. Uh, uh, sure, Beverly Hillbillies isn't really a popular show anymore. Uh, even the movie reboot, I don't think anyone cares about. Uh, but it, it, it just... It, it, for the money for nothing... It, the fact that he's taking something as separate as money for nothing... Uh, by the Dire Straits, and then combining it with Beverly Hillbillies, I think it just, like, shows, like, the genius of Weird Al's, like, mind, like, how he'll just take things that most people wouldn't think of. Great music video as well that, uh, that perfectly emulates it. It's really tight to say. I love good old days, but, uh, I gotta give it to Beverly Hillbillies. I think it's, um, I might regret that later, but... Yeah, no. I, I, if we're talking about, like, some of this is gonna be, like, my personal choice, and also me trying to say, like, what I think is just objectively the best Weird Al. Next up, oh god, Radioactive Hamster is an aisle thing. Like, I don't care, I guess. Like, they're both pretty terrible. This is, like, an album that I think a lot of people skipped over because, like, the movie is great, but, um, there's, like, some song, like, it felt like he had to fill the album with leftover ideas and it's like yeah radioactive hamsters isn't that crazy like you already have like don't you already have a, yeah like it's slime creatures from outer space it's kind of like in that sort of vein and like aisle thing is just it's fine i know that's gonna get knocked out but like it really it doesn't matter at the end of the day which one of these i think they're both pretty bad hot rocks polka and the uh titular uhf this is a good polka parody um it's only rolling stone songs and that's not terrible um i i think like <laughs> rolling stones is a little played out i think uh weird al breathe he tries to breathe some life into it but for my money i love uhf the song i think uh it's it's great it just like sort of <laughs> telling what the movie's about telling what like the condensing the idea the spirit of the movie so i'm gonna give it to uhf i don't even have to think about that hard next up we got let me be your hog and she drives like crazy they're they're fine they're fine i want to say she drives like crazy and i don't really have much else to say about it like let me be your hog is just kind of obnoxious this is obnoxious too but it's not as obnoxious uh spam and generic blues yeah i'll give it a spam just because it's like it's on the lower end of weird Al's food parodies but like generic blues is, is what you expect i guess it does deliver on the premise um, oh, okay, so now, and then we got the like, another case of the last song against the first song of the following album, Biggest Ball of Twine in Minnesota versus Smells Like Nirvana. Both are great. Weird Al's stories, though, like the, the, the long, drawn-out uh, ballads that he ends his albums with, I'm always a sucker for. Um, I love the story of the family just going on this trip, and they're they're dysfunctional, they're in a, they're awful conditions, they're picking up hitchhikers, they're... They're just filling a car. You can you can feel the 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 what the pickled herring uh, that the wife brings along. You can really feel the the bumper stickers covering all over the car uh, for miles and miles and miles driving across uh, states. 
Smells Like Nirvana is great. I think it's great, but I love Biggest Ball of Twine in Minnesota. Not even a contest. Yeah. Trigger Happy, uh, about like, you know, mass shootings. Hilarious, obviously. Uh, <laughs> I wonder how Weird Al feels about the song. It's not like... It's like... I don't know what we could have done to make the song better. Because it's fun. It's like, it's laying so much into the, uh, uh, of, uh, like, I guess, like, beach rock and combining, like, the fun carefreeness of a different era with, like, where we found ourselves in the 90s with people just being miserable and shooting each other. Can't watch this, uh, being, like, the MC Hammer song. It's, yeah, I guess I gotta give it to the MC Hammer one. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> It's not like I, I'm against Trigger Happy, but I don't know, I, I usually skip over it. We got Polka Your Heart Out and I Was Only Kidding. Yeah, I don't care for I Was Only Kidding, so I don't even have to look at what's on this. The White Stuff, parody of The Right Stuff. When I Was Your Age. I love When I Was Your Age. Just the story of... Like, I always think of Dana Carvey's character of... Uh, like what was it on the weekend update he would be this old man that would say like yeah we were fine with how terrible things were and he's obviously exaggerating things i'm positive that weird al was most likely inspired by it uh but it doesn't feel like you ripped anything off i love when i was your age i think it's it's great like the 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 degree that like they'll they'll take the storytelling to like is like a great like final verse for this where like you're like okay you're definitely making shit up um yeah Dad would whoop us every night till quarter to twelve. Then he'd get too tired. We he'd make us whip ourselves. Then he'd chop me into pieces and play frisbee with my brain. And let me tell you, Junior, you'd never hear me complain. It's it's hilarious. I love it. I love when I was your age. It's uh, it's yeah, playing frisbee with your brain. Hilarious. Next up, we got Taco Grande and Airline Amy. Um, yeah, Taco Grande is fine. I like Airline Amy. Another relationship sort of story about him falling in love with somebody. Uh, not like terribly funny, but I like it more than Taco Grande. Like, what's the, what's the bit? I don't get the bit with Taco Grande. Uh, we got the plumbing song and You Don't Love Me Anymore. Forget the plumbing song. I love You Don't Love Me Anymore. Um, another love song, but it's it's got a really soapy instrumentation. It's it's so uh really trying to get you to uh, you know to get the waterworks to go. I. I I love it. He's 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 selling the the heartbreak of it in a different way and really trying to get more emotion out of those keys uh and uh, the synths. I love it. I love you. I love me anymore. Um brings a tear to my eye. Love it. We've got Jurassic Park and Young Dumb and Ugly. Sort of in the same vein as uh when I was your age. Jurassic Park being a parody of MacArthur Park. Hmm, yeah. Like, I, I like Young, Dumb, and Ugly, but I think Jurassic Park is, uh, it just, it tells the story of the movie, and with the, uh, like, <laughs> I, I hear MacArthur, I've never listened to the original MacArthur Park song, but I hear it just goes on for ages and ages, so I'm happy to spend that time re reliving through the events of Jurassic Park. Great music video as well, great, uh, claymation, classic Weird Al. We got the uh, Bedrock Anthem, which is uh, two Red Hot Chili Peppers songs uh, that he's parodying. Oh, this is going to be difficult. This is going to be difficult. Anything think about this. Because, like, <sighs> Frank's 2000-inch TV is such a great, timeless song about somebody buying a TV that's, like, absurdly huge. As we get to this age, as of 2020, what, 4K TVs are getting cheaper and cheaper and people are finally like just i don't know you're uh, people are buying like they're never gonna not want the next big thing um and i love the uh the, just the imagery of this giant monolith that is people can watch the simpsons from 30 uh, 30 yards away uh robert de niro's mole <laughs> is, is like a huge huge building i love the red hot chili peppers one though it's a great parody. There's nothing wrong with this one. I love Bedrock Anthem. Um, yeah, even like yeah, like the Flintstones. I don't have a problem with the Flintstones. I think it's like, you know, pretty a pretty good idea for a parody, uh, for matching up. But I got a gift to Frank's 2000 inch TV. Love Frank's 2000 inch TV. And the chorus is great. I love I love the the chorus for Frank's 2000 inch TV. And you know the whole the whole gang can sing to it.
Got another case of uh, Lesser of Two Evils. Achy Breaky Song, obviously parodying Achy Breaky Heart uh, by Billy Ray Cyrus. And Traffic Jam, like, kind of get annoyed by this one. Like, it's just someone losing their mind in traffic, but, like, I don't, th I don't think it goes anywhere. <laughs> um, yeah, it, 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 I like it. I like Achy Breaky Song, but, I mean, it's it's also an irritating song, but that's by design, because, like, Achy Breaky Heart isn't that great. It's it's literally a song about, like, please don't play this song, like, so it's, I'm sure Billy Ray Cyrus uh, even would agree with that, like, as self-aware as he is. Talk Soup, Living in the Fridge, yep, uh, I don't care for Talk Soup. Living in the Fridge is a uh, great Aerosmith parody. Uh, obviously, like, <laughs> we all, we, we, we all know what it's like to have stuff just sitting in the back of the fridge for ages and ages. Actually, recently, one of our roommates moved out, and, like, even to this day, like, we'll still, like, be going through the freezer and be like, wait, whose is this? This, this wasn't yours? That guy moved out, like, six months ago. Like, he, like, it's still here? Like, oh, God. Uh, so I love living in the fridge. I think it's great. Uh, we got... She never told me what she was a mime, and uh, Harvey the Wonder Hamster. Like neither of these do really much for me. Harvey the Wonder Hamster, I think, is like playing more to Weird Al's strengths as a storyteller and just being goofy in that sort of children's television sort of way. I think this is a character on the Weird Al show, which I didn't really care for. Uh, yeah, I don't care about. It. She never told me she was a mime. Harvey the Wonder Hamster beats it. Waffle King, Bohemian Polka, yeah, Bohemian Polka, I believe this plays out the album, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, yeah, it's a match made in heaven, it's, uh, instead of a, uh, polka ballad, it's just Weird Al doing a fantastic, uh, polka cover of Bohemian Rhapsody, a song that he's done to death, and I personally can't really stand to listen to, uh, much more, even though I think it's great, it's, it's been played to death, and he breathes life into it, uh, with the magic of polka, love it. On uh, Bad Hair Day, another one of my favorite weird albums. We got uh, Amish Paradise, and oh, this is going to be so hard. Everything you know is wrong. Okay, Gangster's Paradise and Amish Paradise. I love them both. I, I couldn't decide which I love more. I love <laughs> I love all the different ways that uh, he explores Amish culture, and like, but with the production of Gangster's Paradise, uh, it just slaps. It's It's so good. Um, with like, I don't know, you, you, you need to go hard to make this subject matter hilarious and entertaining and never drag, but everything you know is wrong is like a legitimately beautiful, beautiful song. I, I love this song. Somebody like, <laughs> like it, 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 it's another case of someone just being at the end of the rope and everything on their life just falling apart and eventually dying but still like you know realizing oh i'm in heaven and my preconceived idea what heaven was is still wrong so i'm i'm going to be doomed here forever oh this is so hard hmm hmm amish paradise is really great but oh i love everything you know is wrong like i get shivers i get i legitimately get shivers when i think about the song i love everything you know is wrong uh yeah, fantastic though. I love Amish Paradise. Next up, we got Cavity Search. A, uh, I guess it was a U2 parody, but like I, I, I never really like caught that like reference. I, I like Cavity Search. I think like the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the grooviness of it, and like you know we've all been to the dentist's office, and he, he paints a picture that everyone can who's gotten their teeth checked out. I'm not someone that's like terrified of the dentist, but. Yeah, I don't think you even need to to find the humor in this. Um, just sort of the uncomfortable nature of it, and uh, the music, and uh, the, the waiting for someone to just get in your teeth. Um, especially if you don't take care of your teeth, like it must be an absolute nightmare. Colin and Sick is the ballad of a generation. Uh, yeah, got, not gonna lie. Um, anytime I have Colin and Sick, just to you know have a little. I don't do it a lot. I actually, I'd say I. It's a very rare time I'll ever be like, yeah, fuck this, I'm not going into work. Uh, <laughs> I have to be pretty miserable. I love, and it's and, and, and properly so, it's a very morose sort of uh, sounding song. Like, he's, he's taking the day off, but like realizing, oh yeah, I don't have much to really occupy myself with. Like, there's freedom, but then what is freedom if you're just confined to a day and you can do all the chores that you want to do and that's, not re that's still work? Um, I love Colin and Sick. I think Colin and Sick is great. 
Next up, we got Alternative Polka. And since you've been gone, I'm going to take a quick look at my uh, cheat sheet for what's on here. Yeah, you know, I mean, the alternative stuff's fine. Uh, it, uh, it, 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 it's, yeah, they're good. We got uh, some Cheryl Crow, Nine Inch Nails. Not the only Nine Inch Nails uh, song with Weird Al. Um, yeah, you ought to know. This is a great polka. Then, like, I'm so sick of you. Or, no, Since You've Been Gone. I, I love this one because it's, like, the romance breakup song, but he's doing it all a cappella. And I love it. I, I think he it shows that the guy doesn't just, like, rest on his laurels. He doesn't just phone it in. He, he really, like, pushed it. And uh, you really just get a feeling of how amazing Weird Al's voice is. So I'm uh, I'm not going to, like, I feel like it'd be kind of a, a lazy choice to just always give it to the Polka song. I, I, I love Since You've Been Gone. Next up, we got Gump, and I'm So Sick of You, relationship song of, uh, or maybe even just, like, a friend, you know? Like, I, I guess, maybe it's, hmm, I can't remember, actually, specifically. I guess it doesn't really matter. It's, like, a relationship of some sort, maybe a friendship or, yeah, a romantic relationship. Regardless, um, they're both pretty funny. I think uh, Gump has a bit of a, more of an edge just for being, at the time when everyone was just like, oh, Forrest Gump's like the best movie ever. I don't hate Forrest Gump, but I think it, Weird Al was like brave enough to be like, okay, so just to be clear, this is what the movie's about, and like you guys, and when you, all he's doing is just saying what the movie basically is. I don't think he's editorializing that much. Um, I love Gump. I think it's great. We got Syndicated Incorporated, and oh, this is gonna be hard. This is gonna be hard. This is going to be hard. Syndicated Incorporated. Perfect, perfect, perfect. It's... Weird Al talking about TV is some of the best Weird Al. And I think the with the... Uh, uh, what, was it? what is the song he's like parodying? It's the song that plays at the end of Clerks. What is that? Oh, Misery, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I love it. And it, it. Like, he takes you to, like, a sad sort of place, but, like, it's just through the sound of the production. Um, and him just listing off all the shows that he likes to watch. I, I think it's great. Um, I remember Larry is, uh... Is this the prankster? I think this is the prank... Yeah, this is the prankster one. It's great. You know, there's nothing wrong with this song. Um, the progression's great. It gets darker and darker. Uh, Weird Al gets his revenge on the guy, leaves him in the woods, and the reveal of that is pretty funny uh but i do love syndicated i like a little variety like i remember larry is like uh, like uh, i'd say the majority of weird al songs are like upbeat and like uh very you know energetic syndicated is like him playing against his strengths uh and it's still hilarious so i'm gonna give it to syndicated Ooh, oh, oh, oh no phony calls in the night santa went crazy oh god a perfect TLC. Okay, so yeah, perfect TLC parody. It, it, I'd say it like capt perfectly captures the groove of the TLC song. Every part of the song is perfect, down to like the the <laughs> the idea of somebody just like calling all of New York City through the phone book, just being obsessed with prank calling. It is like a thing where like there are people that like are just addicted to the danger of prank calls. I will I will say like uh, I I completely understand that the night and it also that um br getting into uh the Simpsons reference that they work into there. I always thought that was amazing, like because I always figured Simpsons Simpsons costs a lot of money to license into a song, so I don't know if that was a case of. It, it was expensive, or if the Simpsons are a big fan of Weird Al. I know they feature him on the show, but I don't know if they did him a favor. But uh, I always love that like little part of the bridge where you actually get the bit of Bart calling uh, the classic, one of the many Bart Simpson calling uh, most tavern bits. Uh, I think it just makes the message just so much uh, more um, poignant. The Night Santa Went Crazy is great, though. It's uh, it's great. One of his great holiday horror comedy songs. Um, yeah, it's hard to say. I love Phony Calls. Yeah, I gotta give it to Phony Calls. But I love The Night Santa Went Crazy. Catchy as hell. But uh, Phony Calls is just, like, you can listen to Waterfalls and listen to Phony Calls, and I don't think you're, like, taking much of a step down. I think they're, uh, they're both great. Uh, I felt like including this as the B-side, um... 
because apparently it was B-side the uh, intro song you did for the, uh, I'd say, lesser Leslie Nielsen uh, spy parody film, um, like Spy Hard. Like it's, it, it, they were trying to make like a Naked Gun, but with uh, spies and just using all the uh, like airplane <laughs> like isms of it. But uh, I, I don't know. I, I think it's it's a fine song. Um, it's fun in the movie. It's like it's a great way to kick off the film. But um, yeah, if I'm comparing that to like where uh, Running with Scissors goes with Saga Begins, I don't even need to go into like why this is a better song. It just is. This is the song that. Was played on Radio Disney. Uh, I believe this was the song that got me uh, like into Weird Al. I didn't know who he was, and I th- th- hear this guy <laughs> telling the story of Phantom Menace and uh, the the imagery of like of Gungans dying being hilarious uh, with American Pie. The rhythm of uh, the catchy rhythm of American Pie. It's great. Love song begins. Next up, we got My Baby's in Love with Eddie Vedder and Pretty Fly for Rabbi. I, I get, this is like, probably for the time was probably hilarious, but like, I, I, I always skip this one. And it, it's it's relying a lot on like the polka to carry it, but like, I don't think it has really much to like, say about really Eddie Vedder. Like, it's, it's like, it, if you don't know who he is, like the, what was the singer of Pearl Jam, it's kind of just an okay song. Next up, we got the weird al show theme and jerry springer uh this one's tough you know it's actually not that tough if i'm being honest uh the weird al show theme I- i'm not even really a big fan of the weird al show uh if i was a little extra i don't think it even played to weird al's strengths uh that much but i i i think the intro is says a lot about his uh it does play to his strengths as a songwriter he, he crams in so much storytelling and wordplay and I, I i it's really as many times i hear this song it never gets old and there's even parts where like you, you try to challenge yourself to remember the order that these words come in uh, at rapid fire and uh, it's just brimmy with energy jerry springer's fine it's fine it's a uh, the bare naked ladies parody great idea for parody i mean it's it's ripe for it's perfect it's the perfect kind of song that weird al would do a parody song for uh you know it it it, it, it does kind of get old by 2020 just hearing the same like oh isn't jerry springer terrible isn't mari terrible um yeah i i think uh this is like a case of less is more really doing a lot more for me germs and polka power uh i do like polka power great polka parody we got uh let me see what uh ones are on here yeah Spice Girls, Harvey Danger, Backstreet Boys, Smash Mouth, Beastie Boys. It's great, solid uh, polka one, but for my money, Weird Al challenging himself with his production is always going to be something where I, I respect it. Like, like Capturing the Nine Inch Nails' eerie, creepy sound, it, 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 he's, he's stepping out of his comfort zone, and I think it, for the even though like the subject isn't necessarily hilarious, it's still... I think it's a great Weird Al song. I, I like Germs. I think it's great. Uh, next one, yeah, All About the Pentiums in your horoscope for today. All About the Pentiums, yeah, it's a great song. It's a uh, late 90s Weird Al making a song about someone bragging how much money they're wasting on a computer equipment that's going to be outdated. And even in the 90s, like, like late 90s wasn't really as effective or useful as, you know, stuff we have today. It's, it's not it's still like you have really bad internet and really slow computing speeds so uh what are you really getting out of it um but like your horoscope for today is just a great weird l song it's it's got that ska <laughs> uh yeah slap to it. it it's him just going through all of the, the everyone shouting the different uh astrological signs and giving these i'm not even sure if they actually even closely correlate to what the uh, signs really stand for but uh <laughs> i i love the uh the messages of them and how uh yeah people are just going to be investing too much self-worth into this and it will be a self-fulfilling prophecy if they uh you know just read this and like expect anything it to actually give them a any real guiding force Next up, we got the truck driving song, and Grapefruit Diet. Both of these are good. Um, Grapefruit Diet's got a nice little uh, uh, jazz sort of sound to it. Guy losing, trying to lose weight and saying all the food that he can't eat anymore and sort of like the uh, inversion of uh, fat and eat it. 
Uh, which is like, no, he's, he's going in a different direction with it. Nothing wrong with that. For my money, though, I, I, I really like uh, truck driving song, though. Truck driving country music is so, like, one note for me. And it, it I, I think that's by the design. It's kind of just meant to be, like, all right. And that's a lot of country, I feel like, too, that's, uh, like, popular. is It's just meant to keep you moving and keep someone that's, like, on the road all day just like alive and not falling asleep at the wheel and to have the added layer of someone uh, experimenting with their sexual identity or just even like how they're dressing like it might not even be like sexual orientation they're just like talking about like the slow reveal of like oh yeah like and now we're i'm trying on like different nail polishes now i'm trying high heels it's uh you know it, it's it's certainly not malicious uh from any time i hear it it, it seems like a very uh loving sort of approach to that idea so i love truck driving songs oh uh, and yeah this isn't a contest um albuquerque amazing amazing it's one of his best songs ever the, one of the best album ways to end an album that he's ever done uh, this guy's life story about going from being a miserable kid to winning a contest to being robbed and having a love and then losing the love and getting a job that they they like but also like <laughs> not really going anywhere i love albuquerque and uh it's 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 a fantastic journey and it never gets old anytime i hear it i love it pokemon's fine you know it's just him listing off all the different pokemon certainly not one of the you know worst songs on the uh, pokemon 2000 soundtrack but uh yeah it's not not even close. Next up, we got my favorite, one of my favorite albums, the album that got me into Weird Al in the first place, Poodle Hat, 2003. Got Couch Potato, the Lose Yourself Eminem uh, parody. I think that uh, after all that time, like, away, oh, the guy was putting out an album almost every other year, and uh, there was a little bit of time down, and he had to come back, and the music scene had changed, pop music had changed, and he had to adapt with the times, and this album... He really shows that he's he's he understands it. He's not like this old man that's like just like uh, loosely doing his parodies. He's he's playing to his strengths as like this is another TV. Him just listing off like all the different uh, the excess of reality television of the early 2000s, all the junk TV, the channel surfing when it was like I'd say like at its worst. Um, too many things on TV and nothing to watch. Um, and, uh, yeah, like, tapping into the what made Lose Yourself such a catchy tune, it's it's great. But then we got to Hardware Store, and this might be one of his best songs of all time. Um, if not just for the fact that it shows how this guy can just rapid-fire make just a list of things you get at a hardware store hilarious, and, like, just by how fast he's saying it how catchy the uh the riff is and like the uh, putting you in the position of somebody that has been waiting for ages and ages and like it's an event that this guy is like going inside the store and everything it could possibly ever want like it, they could have gone to any hardware store but this is the hardware store uh i love i love hardware store you so know it, it's very close to couch potato but I, I i i gotta give it to hardware store next up we got trash day uh, the It's Getting Hot in Here parody, uh, which is, you know, it, 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 there's a lot of uh, bling rap from the early 2000s that is, it, 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 you'll hear it on the radio, and it, it's it's not really evergreen, like, you know, in the same way, I guess, like an outcast song, and, like, you can play it at weddings, and, like, it doesn't necessarily just uh, serve as nostalgia bait. Like, uh, the It's Hot in Here song, like, it could have only come out in the 2000s, and that production uh he 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 nails the production on it and <laughs> making it about someone who's just a messy 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 boy uh and to a, such an extreme degree it's 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 really great i think it's one of the best songs on this album party of leper colony is it's kind of a one note joke it's hilarious uh just a bunch of people hanging out and falling apart and being gross um but i gotta give it to uh trash day trash day is great then we got one of the better uh i'd say one of my favorite polka medley is the angry white boy polka like so much music from the time that like it's like he this is we got system of a down white stripes disturbed limp biscuit kid rock yeah that closer with eminem with slim shady is uh it, it's it's burning my brain and it just it, it just knocks it all out want to be your lover is fine it's a guy it's just doing a bunch of like pick up lines and it's it's kind of intentionally cringe but uh yeah i love angry white boy polka a lot 
a complicated song, a parody of the Avril Lavigne complicated. It's a fantastic parody. It, uh, <laughs> uh, I think, uh, even though, like, I don't think people were, like, sick of the song when it came out, but, and I don't think, the, like, the parody made people sick of it either, but I think, uh, showing, like, if you think your life's complicated, try, uh, you know, finding out you've been dating a family member for probably a little too long, uh, after the point, and losing your head on a, uh, roller coaster. Why does this always happen to me? I love this song. Um, another one of his, uh, guy at the end of his rope stories. It's very funny. But I gotta give it to Complicated. I think, uh, starting with the guy, like, eating pizza, being constipated, and then the, the progression of it, it's, it's fantastic. I think it's just, it's just a beautiful song. We got Ode to a Superhero, the Piano Man, Spider-Man parody song, which was, you know, after the Spider-Man film coming out, obviously kids my age, and every, I think everyone, but, like, especially as a kid, loving the Spider-Man movies, re-watching them, uh, and not a, really being a cynical person, after see, listening to this song and uh, Weird Al, sort of like the, the Gump song, being like, oh really, this is, it's, it, he's taking a very Mad Magazine sort of approach to uh, satirizing all the ridiculousness of it. A movie that's already ridiculous, but probably not, uh, I don't know if people were aware of just how silly and ridiculous aspects of this movie were at the time. I think people were uh, still kind of amazed by the uh, comic book movie, the, uh, like movement, like how this wasn't like a complete failure, like uh, so many other uh, superhero movies at the time. It felt like a very like, oh, we're in a new age of things. Uh, but with Weird Al, you know, making fun of uh, like how ridiculous Mary Jane and Peter's relationship is, and uh, the Green Goblin looking like Power Ranger, it's great. The Bob song is, you know, it's Weird Al parodying Bob. It's a uh, what are you gonna do? It's it's uh, we get it. It's Weird Al parodying Bob. There's not really much else to it. Next we got eBay, uh, one of my favorites, and Genius in France. Genius in France is a it closes out Poodle Hat. It's a it's a, another sort of guy going on a journey and realizing all these new things about himself and being a sort of fish out of water. Uh, which Weird Al does great. It's it's fine. Apparently this is like in the style of a Frank Zappa song. I've only listened to some Frank Zappa, so I'm not uh, totally aware of like, maybe there's an aspect I'm not appreciating of it. I, I think it's great. But eBay is so funny. And maybe I'm biased as like a, a Backstreet Boys fan, um, but this the this song is still like perfect people still still buy junk they don't need on ebay constantly people are selling ridiculous things on ebay and in some cases making lots of money maybe just selling things that are too like expensive that they shouldn't be selling for people we we still consume way too much stuff on a uh, uh, online marketplaces and just showing i think that would like uh, i'm i'm I, I just am so glad that like he got a he gave time to a Backstreet Boys, a boy band song, and that it was a Backstreet Boys song. That last part where he's like, oh, you think the song's over? He's still squeezing out the last bit of that note. Hilarious. This is a little miscellaneous one. Uh, the James Blunt, You're Beautiful parody, which he, uh, <laughs> he put on his website, uh, which I would go to all the time, weirdal.com, and uh, it was a free download, and it, it was sort of like hyping me up for the new album and uh but this never got a i, I think a, an official release because even though james blunt gave his permission the record label uh, wasn't cool with it so it just it didn't make it onto straight out of linwood but it, i think it's hilarious the uh the false start making fun of james blunt just saying like my life is brilliant and then nothing and then re-saying it again like to kick out the song uh i think weird Al does it great with like oh, oh oh we're not going oh you want me to start over okay great like that's it's it's I think um, one of his lesser known uh, gems. White Nerdy's great. White Nerdy's great. Nothing wrong with White Nerdy. Great video. A lot of uh, paying homage to nerd culture, which at the time I don't think there were a lot of people uh, doing that. Great cameos in the uh, the video. A lot of good. Uh, but that's really all there is to it. Just a guy being like nerdy and set to chameleon air, which like even like I guess to compare Hot in Here, like Hot in Here is like a it's a time capsule, but, like, it, it's still one that, like, people love to put on. I don't know if people really care about, like... I mean, well, people like, like, uh, Ride and Dirty, but it's, it's... I think, even though it came out later, it feels even dustier of a, uh, a pop song, personally. 
And uh, yeah, if, if it's between the two, I think your pitiful is hilarious. You got Pancreas and Canadian Idiot. Uh, I mean, you got a Beach Boys song style parody about, you know, a, a, an organ that does a lot of stuff. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's an okay Beach Boys uh, parody. Canadian Idiot is like, oh no, even when American Idiot came out, you knew, like, uh, yeah, why not Canadian Idiot? Why don't, why don't you just let, say a bunch of things that happen in Canada? And that's pretty much what this is. Um, yeah, I guess I'd give it to Canadian Idiot. Pancreas is fine, but uh, I think it's like, I think it's just a better Weird Al song, just for the fact that it's, it's him, it's him parroting one of the popular rock uh, pop songs of the time which is what he does best. Next we got All Suya, Rage Against the Machine style uh, parody, and rock rama and I'm just going to bring this up. I'm not crazy about All Suya. It doesn't really have much to say about <laughs> the subject matter. Yes, everyone knows that you are you can be sued for anything in this country, in America, and I don't know how it is elsewhere, but it uh, doesn't really, kind of just doesn't really go anywhere. Meanwhile, Polkarama, you got, what, Black Eyed Peas, Weezer, Gorillas, Modest Mouse, The Killers, 50 Cent, yeah, Kanye West, yeah, no, Paul Karama's hilarious. Virus Alert is great, I love it, I love the production of this, I love the uh, the keys on this, I love how it feels like you're inside the internet, like that episode of Fairly Odd Parents where Timmy's chasing the email that he sent on accident, and it's, you know, talking about all the ridiculous things that could happen if you get a virus, it'll Everyone's worst fear is it'll email your grandma all the porn you've ever watched. Uh, it's great. But Confessions Part 3 is such a good parody of Usher, I, I, of Confessions Part 2. And it really feels like a proper sequel. Just like, okay, this guy hasn't learned anything, and he's just like, okay, I'm just going to lay everything else on the line. And even though you, it seems like you forgave me, there's some other stuff I forgot to say. I love Confessions Part 3. Weasel Stomping Day, not a big fan of Weasel Stomping Day, not gonna lie. Uh, I remember, like, what was it, there was like a robot chicken skit, like, I, I think they hired the robot chicken people to make the music video for this. This probably would have been better as just a standalone robot chicken sketch, like, for the time. I, I don't really, it, it's not even purely from a stance of, like, I don't think animal abuse is funny, uh, but it, it's it doesn't really go anywhere funny. And I like Close But No Cigar. Uh, <laughs> that that one's animated by... Uh, it's not Schmorky. Who's the guy? Uh, 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 Craig Falusi. Um Yeah, I like Close But No Cigar a little bit more. It's about a guy just being... It's a very relatable story. Someone just, like, getting... <laughs> meeting all these great uh, women and little things, little picadillos uh, making them want to break up. Like, is that really... <laughs> How much of that is really satire? I mean, there's people that really will let little things uh, distract them from the bigger picture, so I love Close But No Cigar. Do I Creep You Out? Love this song. Love it. Uh, it's, what was it? This was the guy that was on American Idol, and it's just like a, a, a love ballad of a guy that is a stalker and is takes things to a very dark place, going through their trash and following someone from home. It's great. I love it. And it's short and sweet, too, uh, but the way it builds is, um, it, you know, it, it gives me goosebumps. It's it's uh, really great. Uh, but Trapped in the drive through one of his best ballads ever. The, the, the Trapped in the Closet, it doesn't even, like, Trapped in the Closet doesn't even come close to capturing what what this song is able to do like a couple trying to decide what to eat and no one wants to make the first step and so they settle on like a drive through but the drive through is way too long and who hasn't like gone somewhere and just like forgot to bring like the exact change and i'm sure like things are a lot easier now but like in the early 2000s uh i don't know i i, I found myself relating to this a lot it also does a great job of what trapped in the closet did where not every verse has to rhyme and it doesn't matter because even though the production is just kind of the same thing over and over again the passion of weird owl is uh, very much present in this so i love trapped in the drive through don't download the song uh, i believe this was also put out for free on his website uh which was hilarious because it's a ballad of it was when lars ulrich and uh people were really starting to take a, a stand on music piracy and like the conversation was still we're still having this conversation today but uh 
it was a very sort of black and white understanding of you're taking music from people and it's like are we taking music or are you just selling music for way too much money and there isn't a uh, a readily available service outside of the illegal peer-to-peer -peer stuff uh so weird al throwing his hat in the ring for this it, it's like i had a little trepidation when i i remember playing it's kind of like oh god he's gonna be preaching but it's literally him saying like no like take my song i'm giving you my song i'm happy that you are getting it from me that is the point like these artists like are being paid loads and loads of money you are not taking money from their mouths like it's 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 the record labels that like technically are losing money like the whole conversation on this is bad um and then we get into Al, uh, what's it, Alpocalypse. Form This Way is fine. Like, you knew a Lady Gaga, uh, she was like, you know, a, a rising star at the time. You knew a Weird Al parody was coming of uh, Born This Way, and it's a fine one. Um, but yeah, I gotta get this to don't download the song. I love it. Um, this album's kind of tricky, uh, because on one hand, this is when, like, uh, like he's really starting to like embrace the online presence and platform of YouTube and like music videos are uh, he's 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 not relying on MTV to get these out. Um, he's starting to play the uh, viral video game. Uh, so like some of these like yeah like I remember Perform This Way was like a big hit. Um, so it was nice to support it, but I'm not crazy about it. CNR is like a White Stripes sound alike, but I don't think he really it would have been better off just trying to. It's hard to parody Jack White's, like, writing style. Um, because it's not really... I don't know if it's really... I guess, like, anything can be parodied, but, like, I don't think he really understood what makes White Stripes songs uh, so catchy. It's not just the sound and, like, the messy production of it. This is, like... And he's also, ta like, referencing Charles Nelson Riley, an actor that, like, nobody, like, would care about, and it's not even, like... Like, he does a good job explaining it. It's just sort of like a Chuck Norris type joke. Like, oh, he could do anything. And then that's it. That's the song. TMZ, the Taylor Swift song. Uh, and, you know, I, I'd say it, it complements the, uh, the the pop star lifestyle. Uh, especially, you know, Taylor Swift is was still is like one of the most uh, popular stars. And TMZ is like a bunch of vultures. Yes, they will break stories sometimes that are... Uh, important and but they're also like vultures that prey on people's weakness and at their worst moments and weird al takes them to task great song great song next we got skipper dan and polka face right off the bat i uh i like skipper dan it's one where i had to warm up to it yeah i uh this song uh rubbed me very much the wrong way the first time i saw it because it's just about a guy following his dreams after college and getting stuck at a uh, dead-end job as a uh, tour guide on the Jungle Cruise ride at Disneyland. And his name's Dan, so it's like a taste of reality from Weird Al, a, a place I never thought I'd get such a, uh, a red pill from. I, do, I have grown to appreciate it. I really like it, and I think it's a, a very catchy song. Polka Face uh, is a great medley. I remember... Um, People were, that was like one of the big questions was, oh, what, what's going to make it into the Polka medley? And people, uh, I remember on um, a forum I was going on, somebody posted a concert footage of uh, like a flip phone video of uh, the, him performing it for the first time. And then people like just losing their shit like in the audience because they're they're aware. Oh, my God, he's he's covering Daft Punk. He's covering uh, Justin Bieber. And uh, it's amazing. Yeah. Katy Perry, Al City. Jamie Foxx. There's a lot of great uh, songs here. I think this is one of the best songs on there. Yeah. Oh, man. It's 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 great. I'm going to give it to uh, Polka Face. Skipper Dan's great, though. Shout out to Skipper Dan. Rest in peace. Next, we got uh, Craigslist. A Doors-style sound-alike parody. Again, kind of missing the mark. Not really... Uh, I think enough of a door song and also like it, it's funny that he's able to find the relatability of what the average interaction and uh, uh, sketchiness of going on a website like Craigslist it's sort of like the eBay song um, but I don't think it uh, it's not pointed enough and party in the CIA is is <laughs> a much more pointed parody of uh, the Miley Cyrus party in the USA uh it, it's 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 literally critiquing the uh cia's involvement in foreign elections uh assassinations the 
just how sketchy it is, and uh, it's something that you wouldn't expect from Weird Al. Like, uh, uh, like some people think he plays it clean. There, he's referencing some pretty bleak stuff in this. So I love Party in the CIA. Ringtone, uh, which is apparently supposed to be a Queen parody. It says in the style of Queen. I have never understood that. I, I think he also put this on his website for free, and like the the album art is supposed to be like Night at the Opera, but. I, I, I don't I think it's just obnoxious and uh, I don't I don't get the point of it like it's yeah like I had an obnoxious I had um, an obnoxious ringtone I had uh, crack a bottle as my ringtone on my flip phone but that was like years and years before this album came out so it, it maybe it kind of missed the mark maybe it could have uh, like the idea could have been better <laughs> presented I think another tattoo uh, parody of Nothing On You, Babe, is hilarious. It understands what makes the original work, and uh, I think it's great. It's, it's like, the, the imagery of all the, like, how much space is on someone's body and, like, how long they've been investing ink into it. It's really uh, not that even much of an exaggeration, people. It is apparently a addictive uh, thing if you can afford it, and have the imagination um and it's not uh chastising it either i think it's like pointing at the ridiculousness of it but it's not like how do you do fellow kids or wagging a finger at people that uh that get piercings and tattoos which is like oh yeah weird al's cool like no shit if that isn't love another love ballad about somebody that is uh saying they're gonna give their all uh on this like relationship but is their their all isn't really that much they're they're consider enough to leave a little sliver of milk in the in the milk jug they'll uh, hold the, they'll be they're so nice they'll hold the ladder uh they won't sharpie on their face when they're drunk because they're that nice of a person whatever you like is fine you know i i remember uh this was uh one of the songs that uh he was that came out i think as an ep and it was like, oh yeah, like this, this, this is perfect, uh, right up Weird Al's alley for, uh, like this, this guy that is <laughs> saying, yo, baby, I'm gonna take you out, but I also don't have much money, so you're gonna have to <laughs> just roll with me, cause I'm, I'm doing the best I can. It's good, uh, but I, I love if that isn't love. Um, I think Weird Al's singing on this also is, uh, just great. Nearing the end. Nearing the end, we got. What ends, uh, what plays out, Alpocalypse, great songs, stop forwarding that crap to me, about a, a timeless ballad, even to this day, at least from my perspective, of relatives just including you on ridiculous, obnoxious email chains with weird fonts and stories that are supposed to be like conspiracies and bad photoshops and like this is, even in the age of social media and all these apps, people are still sending chain emails and it's uh it's hilarious the incompetence of being able to adapt to the times uh, is hilarious i love stop wording the crap handy's fine it's uh um what was it charlie xcx uh it's fine it's just it's kind of like the the hardware store one where just someone talking about oh i'm gonna get a bunch of things fixed and that's that's fine i don't think uh also his voice uh works as well for this one because like charlie xcx's voice is so like it, 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 I don't know if you can emulate it that well. Uh, it, 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 it was kind of a missed attempt. Next, we got Lane Claim to Fame. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is... <laughs> so now we're at the last album. Uh, Mandatory Fun. It made him... It, it got him uh, to the top of the Billboard 100 for the first time. It got him his fourth Grammy. I am happy that it got him all these accolades, and I was happy part of the movement. This is easily my least favorite album of his uh and we'll see why lame claim the fame is not really a it's just a guy saying like oh yeah i met a bunch of non-famous people and that's it it's just it, it, it the production isn't that great and there isn't anything to keep you wanting to go back to it it uh starts to sound like dad rock foil is um yeah royals by a uh, lord it's fine if i had to pick two it's fine but again i it's like handy where like i don't what makes those songs great isn't like just the production; it's the vocals, and uh, I don't think Weird Al's voice is uh, suited for that. Um, there might have been better pop songs for him to parody, but it, it made sense for him to do that. Uh, got the sports song, which I love. It's just him, a, a, a marching band sort of style song. A, 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 a team saying that like we're going to destroy you, and you might as well just quit. You suck. Just yelling, you suck, is hilarious. 
Uh, it's not even a contest against word crimes, which is just blurred lines. A song that isn't even that good, um, and it's like a grammar Nazi, basically. Uh, but you can't really save that song. Can't really add anything to it to make it good. Not, like it's it's the 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 foundation of that song is rotten. So what can you do? Got my own eyes. I don't like this song. I really don't like this song. So yeah, I know that's what I call Polk is great. LMFAO, Kesha, Kimbra, Carla Rae Jepsen. It's great. It's great. It's great. I like that's what I call Polka. That's great. Mission statement. Uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash style parody. It's all right. It, I mean, it, it it nails the sound of a Crosby, Stills, and Nash song. So props on being able to replicate that. Um, but it, yeah, it's not really funny. It doesn't where where one ends and where the other begins is kind of unclear. Inactive is like yeah. Imagine dragons. Um, not really funny. Uh, I can lie. Another case of like the voice of the singer of Imagine Dragons is why that song is so catchy. The production does a little bit of that, but like you, you, Weird Al being able to sound like an active, you can hear he's just struggling, and you feel kind of bad for him. Uh, but it was also like a yeah, no duh, he was gonna parody one of the most popular pop songs of uh, the time. So we got First World Problems. Um, Tacky, yeah, no, Tacky's great. I don't even have anything to say about First World Problems. It's lame. Tacky is actually like uh, a really good parody of uh, Pharrell. Good video, really funny uh, jokes about like rude people. It's more like just taking rude people to task, uh, maybe more than being funny. Uh, and I mean, yeah, the an album ends on such a weak note. Jackson Park Express, it's this drawn out like a uh, uh, folk style song like throwback of a guy on a bus uh assuming a bunch of things from just like vague eye contact from a stranger which is kind of funny because like there's something kind of relatable about people being in their own head and self-sabotage yeah not much to say about it and then uh his most recent release the hamilton polka it's uh you know it's it's him going through hamilton's greatest hits and it's it I, I, he he makes it catchy and it's nice to just hear him just rapid fire go through the whole musical in a few minutes. So now as we go into round two, and uh, things are gonna get a little dicey. We're gonna go right back to the past on here and uh, let's it's it's gonna get vicious, guys. So uh, you know I hope I, I hope I'm not hurting anyone's feelings on this. If you if you love love certain of the songs, uh, you know I'm real sorry to to you, but that's just the way it goes in the tournament. Uh, only, there can only be one. Ricky and I Love Rocky Road. Hmm. Hard to say. They're both pretty much the same level of quality. Um, I guess I'd give it to Ricky. Because, like, the Mickey song is, like, better than Rocky Road. I think it has more to offer. And like I Love Rocky Road kind of just also drags a little bit, but it's it's much much better than I Love Rock and Roll personally. Uh, happy Birthday checks in the mail. I think checks in the mail still. Uh, I mean, God, Happy Birthday still has so much like a Weird Al trying to like he's got so much to prove, and he's just slapping you in the face with his his polkiness. And checks in the mail is still so funny. Uh, hmm. This is so hard actually. No, gotta give the checks in the mail. It, it, it's it's they're both perfect, but I gotta give it the checks in the mail. Uh, mellow when I'm dead, Mr. Frump and the Iron Lung. Yeah, mellow when I'm dead. It's much better, much much better. Midnight Star, buy me a condo. Midnight Star is just the better song. It is uh, it's got just more to offer. Buy me a condo. It stays in its lane. It's not a bad song. Midnight Star, it just has so much uh, more to offer as far as production and songwriting and comedy. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's I think it's great. I Lost on Jeopardy, King of Suede. Ooh, hard to say. This is difficult. I love the policeness of King of Suede, but I love I Lost on Jeopardy. I think it has more to offer for like jokes and like doing the unexpected. <laughs> Was it the bit with uh, Rice Maroney of the San Francisco Tree and like 
I think it's great. I think it's just great. Rest in peace, Alex Trebek. Uh, that boy could dance like a surgeon. Hmm. God, I do like a surgeon. That boy could dance is good, but uh, yeah, like a surgeon still evergreen in my opinion. Want a new duck? One more minute. One more minute. Yeah, absolutely. Still, uh, still great. Heartbreaking romance song. George's Jungle, This is the Life. Yeah, not even close. Hilarious song. Hooked on polkas, living with a hernia. Huh. Yeah, is that the sharp dressed man? Not the modern of love? It's pretty much just like the. I'd say one of the most 80s pop rock uh, <laughs> uh, polka medleys. Living with a hernia is hilarious, though. Yeah, I gotta do living with a hernia. One of those days, polka party. Let me bring up polka party. Sledgehammer. Hmm. Yeah, polka party. Polka party. Don't wear their shoes. Christmas of Ground Zero. Definitely Christmas of Ground Zero. Fat, and the song is six words long. Gotta give to fat. Got a gift to Fat. I think I'm a clone now. Alimony, absolutely. I think I'm a clone now. Much funnier than Alimony. Twister, Beverly Hillbillies. Beverly Hillbillies, money for nothing. Oop. Isle Thing, UHF. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely UHF. Absolutely UHF. She drives like crazy in spam. I don't, I don't fucking know. Like, no, it's uh, got to go to the food. There's something about Weird Al and food that's just always gonna be funnier than a, uh, like the lesser, like if it's if it's a one note joke is it is it, you know if if they're both one note jokes, it's usually better when it's food. Biggest ball of twine, Minnesota versus can't watch this. Absolutely, biggest ball of twine. Fantastic ballad. Hulk your eyes out when I was your age. Take a second to look at my look at my list. Cradle of Love, it, it, it cap it it, it 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 nails the sound of the time. Hmm. When I was your age, yeah, no, when I was your age is still funnier, personally. Airline Amy, you don't love me anymore. Yeah, you don't love me anymore. Much funnier. Jurassic Park, Frank's 2000 inch TV. Oh yeah, this is hard. This is difficult. This is difficult. Hmm. Cause like, yeah, the the extreme degree that he takes the TV and explores it is it's it's a perfect song in a way. But Jurassic Park is so good at like playing on the melodrama of MacArthur Park and. The way the song builds, it's such an epic song, like, it's, it's, mm, yeah, I gotta do Frank's 2000 Inch TV. Very close, though. They, they, they really are both, like, I'd say, very close in quality. Living in the Fridge, I guess, like, gotta do a matchup between Harvey the Wonder Hamster and, yeah, it's not even a, not even a contest. Harvey the Wonder Hamster is okay, but, uh, yeah, Living in the Fridge. Next we got Bohemian Polka and Everything You Know Is Wrong. I like Bo Bohemian Polka. Bohemian Polka is a great... It, there's not really much to say about it, I guess, is why I wouldn't pick it. Because it's just Weird Al covering the song. And it's great. But Everything You Know Is Wrong is... Like, there's so much more to appreciate with the storytelling. And I love the, the catchy production of it. I think it's great. I love it. Colin in Sick... Since you've been gone, I like how Colin in Sick makes me feel versus Since You've Been Gone also makes me feel. But I think there's just more to appreciate with the production of Colin in Sick. Like I, ne I never get tired hearing Colin in Sick. It's one of my favorite songs on that album. Gump and Syndicated Incorporated. Uh, hmm. Gotta give it to Syndicated. Close. Very close quality. Bony Calls and Saga Begins. Oh no! 
You know, I think I've grown out of Saga Begins. I think that's the, really the sad truth. I really think that's the sad truth. Like, maybe that's because I'm not as much of a Star Wars fan, and this was like, as a Star Wars fan, it was a great song to have Weird Al doing his thing. But I've kind of just gotten tired of Star Wars, whereas, like, I've heard the, like, I, I haven't gotten tired of TLC, and I've, I've been into, like, their music for a long time, and I think uh, Phony Calls just makes me appreciate them even more, which is always a great sign. Uh, that's what Weird Al does best, for me at least, is, like, his comedy parodies, like, make you appreciate what the source material was sometimes. Pretty Fly for a Rabbi, the Weird Al show theme. Love the Weird Al show theme. It's just... It's just great. As far, I mean, for an intro, it's much better than it has any business being. Germs in your... Oh, no! This... Okay, this is hard. I love... I love germs. I love... I, I, I guess it's not as funny. But, like, the production's still great. I love your horoscope for today. I think the, uh... uh the... Yeah, the zaniness, the ska, like sound. I love horoscope. Going up. Truck driving song, Albuquerque. Yeah, nope. Don't even need to think about it. Love your truck driving song, but Albuquerque is, uh, is, is his opus. Hardware store and trash day. I love trash day, but hardware store is one of his best songs ever. Angry white boy polka. Complicated. Oh. Like, this is, like, particularly one of his best if not his best polka one, because it makes you appreciate all the little nuances of polka music, all the different instruments being used, all the different variations of the songs. <sighs> Complicated's hilarious. But I think Ain't You Right Boy Polka is uh, just kind of going to top it. Odor's Superhero is great. I gotta give it to eBay. I think it's just the evergreen song. Never gets tired for me. You're pitiful, Canadian idiot. You're pitiful. Absolutely. Polkarama Confessions Part 3. Give me a second to see what is on Polkarama. Chicken Dance. It's not a bad one, but I think Confessions Part 3 is like a much better song. It's so funny, and yeah. Yeah, understands uh, what made the after song so good. Like it's it's really not a uh, it's really not a how do you do fellow kids song and it could have been that but it's it's so funny close but no cigar yeah no trapped in the drive through so good another one of his opuses don't download the song TMZ is good but gotta give it to don't download the song it's 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 actually a beautiful song and it has so much to say timeless song. Polka face, party in the CIA. Yeah, party in the CIA is like, is like, oh yeah, you 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 came close. You're fine. But polka face, just yeah, it's it's uh, probably the crown jewel of that album. Uh, another tattoo. If that isn't love, yeah, love. If that isn't love, another tattoo is great. I don't appreciate the song probably enough. I should probably uh, listen to it more. But um, yeah, I think if that isn't love is uh, hilarious. Stop forwarding that crap to me. And foil. Definitely stop forwarding that crap. Sports song, and that's what I call polka. Yeah. Yeah. Let me take one quick look. I'm pretty sure that's, uh... Yeah, nope. Yep, that's the right one. Come on. Like, sports song is great, but that's what I call polka. It's a, it's a fantastic medley. Inactive, tacky. Nope, tacky's great. Tacky's hilarious. Uh, Hamilton versus that. I mean, fuck, I'll just take uh, Tacky over Hamilton. Don't even think about that. Uh, yeah. All right, that was a pretty quick round two. All right, round three. Here we go. Place your bets, everybody. The field is even narrower. So we got Ricky. Checks in the mail. I just like checks in the mail. I think it's. It's just got more to offer. Like uh, Ricky is like fine. It's 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 an Isle of Lucy parody, and that's fine. But I, I think there it loses a lot of relatability uh, for being a a boomer TV show parody and nothing really much else. Mellow when I'm dead. Midnight Star. Love Midnight Star. Midnight Star is great. I lost on Jeopardy. Like a surgeon. Oh man, this is difficult. 
so much to appreciate. Like, it, it strikes me that, like, like a surgeon, he's pushing his voice so far to sound, like, close to Madonna and nails it. And I Lost on Jeopardy is, like, a great song. And has, like, a lot of great jokes. But I think just for the fact that Weird Al's voice, like, he's really challenging himself, it's, uh, it's great. I think it's the better song, personally. We got one more minute. This is the life. Oh, no. Yeah, I mean, you can only go so far with a, uh, a rich, <laughs> braggadocious song versus a, uh, a, a, a passionate Weird Al love song. Like, it's obviously a joke, but it's it actually has, like, a, a real... I think it still works as a love song, and that way I think it's a better... It has more to offer. Next, we got Living with a Hernia and Polka Party. Again, I gotta bring up my uh, a list. The guy, the guy has a million... A million songs. We got, yeah, Hey Jude. This is a lot of, like, classic rock. Yeah, no, Living with a Hernia. I love Living with a Hernia. Christmas at Ground Zero, Fat, yeah, Christmas at Ground Zero. And it's it's great that, like, you don't have to wait for it to be the holidays to appreciate this song. It's funny if you play this song out of season, and it's still funny. Uh, and Fat's fine, but it's, 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 I don't think it has, uh, really much, I don't really think about it that much, it doesn't really stick in my mind much. The tune, the jingle of Christmas at Ground Zero, uh, it understands what makes a classic Christmas song, and it uh, it, it just excels. Think about Clone now and Money for Nothing, Beverly Hillbillies. Gonna give it to Think I'm a Clone, because, uh, yeah, it, this sort of plays onto the TV thing. I understand it might be a weird argument for some people, like, oh, you shouldn't have to know what the show is to understand the joke but like i think so much of it is like it, it, as time goes on people aren't gonna know they'll they more more likely to know what the dire straits song is than what is being told about they might think weird al is just making up a story about some hillbillies and maybe in time like that'll be enough but i think i'm a clone now like the ways he's able to come up with different scenarios for uh what like having a clone would be like the implications of that, I think that uh, just shows how much better of a song it is. And so we got Spam and UHF. I love UHF. Spam is a good song. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, it has just such a. That guitar riff. And uh, may, again, maybe this is like a bias. Like, I all the these parts from the film flash in my head while I'm I'm listening to this song and. It's it's paying homage to an era of uh, of television that doesn't exist anymore. I love it. I love it. Biggest ball of twine. Yeah, it, when I was your age is is a hilarious song, but uh, I gotta give it to Biggest Ball of Twine. Great story. And another thing that strikes me about this is that I don't think a lot of the uh, lyrics even rhyme. Like he's singing, but it's almost like in a way a spoken word sort of deal where he's just saying funny things and sometimes it rhymes sometimes it doesn't and it, it just works so well you don't love me anymore frank's 2000 inch tv yeah if i have to pick between a, a sophie love song and uh, a funny uh <laughs> still a uh, uh i mean we're gonna get to that point surely one day we'll have 2000 inch tvs uh we'll have a blade runner future uh i think uh he's ahead of his time in this way living in the fridge i guess we can Wait till uh, we decide that one for the next round. You're safe for another day living in the fridge. Let's see, we got everything you know is wrong and calling in sick. Mm. This is rough. This is difficult. I think I just love the journey that everything you know is wrong takes you on versus like just how effective calling in sick is. I think it just has yeah more of a uh, just more of a more to offer in that way. That's a great song, though. Syndicated, Phony Calls. Yep, Phony Calls. That's great. I love Phony Calls. The Weird Al Show theme. Your horoscope for today. It's tough. It's tough. There's some genius, genius uh, Weird Al writing here. Probably some of his uh, zaniest. But I love 
I, 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 I don't know if I really care for the production as much as I care for the, how well he knocks out the, uh, the Ska parody in this. So Horoscope for Today wins. Albuquerque Hardware Store. <sighs> I hate that I had to come to this. Gotta give to Albuquerque. It's still his masterpiece. And I love Hardware Store. But uh, I guess I'm just a sucker for a journey, like the journeys that he's able to take me on with his stories. And like Hardware Store is, it's an, it's got a lot to offer. But I love Albuquerque. And I, I, I would, that's, it's really, I don't have to think about it that hard. Angry White Boy Polka or eBay. Very close in quality. Very close in quality. Probably some of the best songs on the album. And like, I guess it's just I, I do love eBay I think it still is the fact that he he's able to tap into something so far like long ago like this is like this album like came out almost 20 years ago and it's still a relatable song and uh, I I love it uh, Angry Oi Boy Polka has some great songs at the time but that's really all I can say about it eBay just seems the touch more on the uh Impulse by Nightmare Escape that we find ourselves in today. You're Pitiful in Confessions Part 3. Yeah, this is it's another difference between a, sort of a one-note joke versus a guy just <laughs> spilling out his guts and one-upping himself uh, after every verse uh, till the, <laughs> the woman he's talking to walks out the door. Uh, yeah, I, uh, Confessions Part 3. It's great. It's great. Trapped in the drive-thru. Oh, no! This is so difficult! Because this has... Don't Download This Song has such a great message, and it needs to be said. Like, it, it, this song is still one of his best songs. And Trapped in the drive-thru is such a... It, like, sure, it might be a one-note joke, but, like, the stages in it... it the, the, it, the scenery, like, the, like or the, the scenes that this takes you into... And, like, the way he's able to play both his husband and the wife and all the people inside the McDonald's. Oh, that's so hard. Yeah, I gotta give the Trapped in the drive through. I think Don't Download the Song is one of his best songs ever. Um, but, yeah, Trapped in the drive through is so good. I, I Yeah, like, the, the, well, I, I forgot about all the people that he plays in the song. And I think that plays a lot into, like, how good of a storyteller he is. Polka Face, and if that isn't love... Yeah, kind of a one-note joke versus a medley now. Like, I... I like, I, I like how different the production on this is. It's like a, a very upbeat sort of, uh, like, I don't know, pop rock tune. Feel good. It's, it's, uh, it's very catchy. The Polka Face... Yeah, they're pretty neck and neck in quality, but I think uh, it plays to his strengths more. Like, if that isn't love, is great. It's an unexpected um, sort of song for him, but uh, yeah, I, I like Polka Face more. Stop forwarding that crap, and now that's what I call Polka. Let me bring up what is on that list. It's an okay medley. It's a good medley. It's all right. Um, doesn't have a whole lot of great songs to draw from. Stop forwarding that crap to me. Yeah, I like this one, uh, and it, it grew on me. Um, it has kind of a rough start, but like it, uh, it, its message is is very uh, clear, and I think it it it, it really succeeds in <laughs> in making its point. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's round three. All right, round four. This is where. Uh, it's gonna get kind of uh, insane. I don't know what to expect. Don't know what to expect. Checks in the mail. Midnight Star. Yeah, I gotta give it to Midnight Star. I th I think it's uh, I think it's hilarious. I think Midnight Star is hilarious. And I love. I I've said it a thousand times. I think the production on it is so catchy. And checks in the mail is funny. Um. But, like, it's like Midnight Star might not even be as funny as Checks in the Mail. But, uh, I, I, I think, um, it's just so catchy and, uh, it knows. It has so much to say about what it's parodying 
that it doesn't necessarily need to be funny, it just needs to satirize it, uh, which I think is like, there is a difference. Got like a Surgeon, One More Minute. Uh, pop parody classic, Weird Al spilling his guts. It's a really great biting, uh, you know, satire and really gross imagery. Hmm. And it's like, this song gets, like, it doesn't get old quick, but it ends really quick. And this one, like, I don't listen to it as much, but, like, I don't get tired of it. I guess I don't get tired of how gross and, like, <laughs> weird, uh, uh, like, this, the situations this guy says he's gonna be put into. Hmm. Yeah, I gotta give to Like a Surgeon. I, I really like Like a Surgeon. It's close. That's a close one. Living with a hernia, Christmas at Ground Zero. Hmm. I think I gotta give it to Living with a Hernia. It's uh it's just got like it, it it nails the James Brown energy and like I just don't think that can compete with uh a nuclear bomb Christmas personally. I think Living with a Hernia is just it's just got so much more to offer. Think I'm a clone now and UHF. I'm gonna give it to UHF. I love this song. I love this song. I don't. I, don't, I won't make any excuses for it. Uh, if that makes me biased because I like the movie a lot, maybe maybe that's part of it. But uh, I think uh, I, I just think it's a great song. I love I love the chorus. Biggest ball of twine in Minnesota. Frank's 2000 inch TV. I'm gonna go with a ballad every time. If it's a good ballad, I'm always gonna go with it. Biggest ball of twine. Love biggest ball of twine. Yeah, I guess we'll save living in the fridge for the next round. I know I said that previously, but I don't think it's time yet. Don't want to overcomplicate things. Everything you know is wrong. Phony calls. I love the journey that everything you know is wrong takes you on. But phony calls is such a good parody of a great song. And it like it's it's a one to one thing for me. Like I don't know which I like more, and I love them both. I'm not always in the mood for everything you know is wrong. I'm always in the mood for phony calls. So I'm going to give it to phony calls. I'm going to give it to phony calls. I feel good about that. Your horoscope for today. Oh, no. These two are fantastic. And there's nothing wrong with horoscope at all. That part where he's like, and at the very least, like where he's just... It's like he's saying it all in one breath. The relative position of the planets and the stars can have a meaning. That's the, the, that whole part. It's a masterpiece. I love that song. But Albuquerque. I can't. I can't not pick Albuquerque. There's literally no way I'm gonna not pick Albuquerque. Like no, no. Sorry, sorry. Albuquerque wins easy. It's not easy, but um, yeah. No, this is uh, that's it's. I I think it's one of his best songs ever. Ebay versus Confessions Part 3. They're both... I mean, okay. Confessions, I think, is funnier. And probably a better parody. Ebay has a better message. But it's also, like, a part of, like, Weird Al... I don't know. I, I'm very nostalgic for Ebay. I'm very nostalgic for Ebay. But Confessions Part 3 is, like, in a way, just as good. Like, it's 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 the same... It's just a few years later, but it's doing everything I love about eBay. It just doesn't have... I guess it doesn't... Man, they both have lasting power. Yeah, I'm gonna give um, Confessions. I'm gonna give it to Confessions. I'm gonna give it to Confessions. eBay's great, but, uh... I never get tired of uh, Confessions. I never get tired of either of these, but I think Confessions Part 3 is just, uh, I think it's just the better one. I think that's what I'm saying. Trapped in the drive through beats Polka Face, and it's not even close. Sorry. Love it, love it. Just can't match it. Just can't match it. Stop forwarding that crap or tacky... Like, it's a good song parody, and, like, I think people reached a point with Happy where they were just getting exhausted with it, and so this breathed a little bit of life into uh, 
that like the sound of the song and like why it was such an earworm. I think suffering that crap though is so funny and like it's uh the chorus on it too is beautiful. Um I love the way he uses the chorus. I'm gonna give it to stuff for in that crap. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I feel good about that. Alright, guys. So the field is even more narrower now. We're in round five. Let's go. Let's just let's just finish this off. Midnight Star versus Like a Surgeon. Yep. Midnight Star. Like, even if... Like, what was up against, like, like a surgeon? Yeah, one more minute. Yeah, Midnight Star was gonna win, no matter what. Easy. Living with a Hernia versus UHF. I think I gotta give it to Living with a Hernia. I think... I Like, UHF is good, but, uh... Like... <laughs> Weird Al just talking about, like, how his back hurts and all the different things he can't do now, and... But, like, while, well, like, uh, emulating James Brown is, uh... I, that's why I like it. He's so versatile. I love... I love that song. I love it. Biggest Ball of Twine beats Living in the Fridge by a fucking mile. Like, I like Living in the Fridge, but it's like, you lasted longer than you should have, buddy. Like, Biggest Ball of Twine is a masterpiece. We got Phony Calls versus Albuquerque. I am terribly sorry, Phony Calls. You you ain't a <laughs> extended ballad of a guy's awful life with a series of skits about, like, <laughs> food and winning contests and... Oh, God, I love Albuquerque. It's like, you just, you just don't have enough, like, to even come close to competing. Let's see, Confessions versus Trapped in the Drive-Thru. It's a little closer, but I love Trapped in the Drive-Thru. God, is this all going to be just ballads after ballads? I think that's where this is headed. I like Confessions, but yeah, Trapped in the Drive-Thru beats it. Definitely beats it. Uh, stop forwarding that crap. So I guess just going to be uh, part of the last... Just advances, just by virtue of existing. It's great. Don't know if it's gonna make it to the top, but uh, we'll see. This is what we got. Oh, and I believe we're getting close to the final round. Round six, I believe this is what it is. We got <sighs> Midnight Star and Living with a Hernia. Yep, Midnight Star. Gotta give it to Midnight Star. Sorry, Living with a Hernia, but uh. I just love this song. Biggest ball of twine. Yeah, you're just gonna hang out there until we, uh... <laughs> know what to do with you. I'm just gonna combine round six and seven. Uh, we got Albuquerque. Oh, no! Albuquerque versus... Don't make me pick. Don't make me pick. Albuquerque versus Trapped in the drive through Oh, God. Why am I doing this? I mean, I list, I said all the reasons why I love Albuquerque, and like, there's a lot of that in Trapped in the drive through A lot of them playing different characters. It is a lot more focused of a story, which isn't a worse thing about it. I just think like, what makes Weird Al's music, is some of his best music, is the unpredictability of his songwriting. And I think that's why like, that last album, Mandatory Fun, it's missing that. Like, even Alpocalypse has like, things like Skipper Dan, like a, a, a sobering tale about uh, don't, you know, get all your hopes up on your dreams, even if you're the most talented person in your field. Like, you, you that doesn't mean you're going to necessarily succeed. You might, like, unexpected things like that. Um, yeah, I gotta give it to Albuquerque. Sorry, Trap. That sucks. That really sucks, but I don't regret it. Like, this is legitimately... I remember one of my friends describing Albuquerque to me, and, like... I thought they were losing their mind or just being like really ADHD, like you're like talking about like five different songs at once. But no, like that, the, it it just there isn't a bad part of that song at all. Um, and not to say Trapped in the Drive Thru has a bad part. I just think Albuquerque is just the shit. This is it, guys. This is where we're at. The best Weird Al song, the final round, seven or eight. I, I forget which one we're on now. We got. Midnight Star. Stop forwarding that crap. 
Biggest ball of twine. Albuquerque. Ooh. This is rough. So I guess if I really had to pick between biggest ball of twine... It's the thing. Okay, now I'm going to get, like, really anal about this. Like, Midnight Star has great production, and it, 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 what it's critiquing is, like, is just perfect. Like, it's perfect for Weird Al, and what he doesn't miss, like, the whole song. Like, the, it, all the jokes work. Biggest Ball of Twine kind of gets a little, like, old, I guess, at points. Like... It, 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 it'll it always brings it back but like yeah. if I'm gonna pick I think I think I gotta give to Midnight Star I gotta give to Midnight Star yeah, all the things I just said about why this is great it sounds like oh I don't really care about it I love this song um but yeah it's flaws are a lot more apparent now when I'm comparing it to Midnight Star I'm amazed this song lasts as long as it did, but I, I, I stand by it. I stand by it. And Albuquerque versus Stop Forwarding That Crap. Oh, God. is All right. Yep. Yeah, all right. And then... <laughs> Midnight Star versus Albuquerque. I mean... I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I don't even have to think about it. I don't have to think about it. Weird Al's Albuquerque, which plays at the end of Running With Scissors. It is the best Weird Al song, uh, in my opinion. It just is great. And I, I don't know what else I can say. I don't regret any of the decisions. I think a lot of these songs are great, but, uh, yeah. Wow. Didn't see this coming. I swear to God, I didn't. I didn't know what I would be picking. I have so many favorite Weird Al songs, but I didn't. I did not think uh, any one of these would be like a standout choice. It was really up into the air. Like I, yeah. so there you go. Uh, if you've been watching this, thank you so much for uh, joining me on my mental deterioration through. Weird Al's music, uh, I hope he's enjoying his time off and just showing up in random projects. Hopefully we get another album from him, but I, I, I think he's at a point where he can kind of just do whatever he wants, and he says he wants to, like, just release music, um, not just as albums, like, he said Mandatory Fun might be his last, uh, traditionally released album, um, so if he wants to just release a parody here and there, that's great, uh, I, I don't know if he'll be able to keep up with um, the crazy YouTube world of parody music, uh, I think there'll always be an audience for him. Uh, but he's he's led quite a life, and uh, Albuquerque. <laughs>